It's time for the North Idaho PrepCast on IdahoSports.com. All right, welcome in another edition of the North Idaho PrepCast on IdahoSports.com, where we are breaking down District 1 and 2 athletics and activities week in, week out. Brandon Bainey joined, as always, by our North Idaho expert, Ryan Skaggs. What's up, Skaggs? What is going on today? Sorry, let me take my glasses off so you don't get a reflection. <laughs> you looked you looked so scholarly though. Yeah, well, I got new I got new glasses last week too. So I normally wear glasses except for when I'm on here so I don't get like a reflection. Um <laughs> so yeah, I'm a four eyes, I'm a nerd, but it's all good. <laughs> yeah, I roll with the contacts most days, but occasionally I've got the specs on as well. No drink today. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I've been so busy, dude. Yeah, that's good. So we're fine. Got my Waterloo, which it's cranberry flavored, which means that it was like seltzer water left in a semi truck and somebody said the word cranberry. That's what flavor it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, that's that's a loose term there, cranberry. Um, <laughs> yeah, for sure. We always start the show on camera. Ryan will take a drink of whatever he's drinking uh, when we record. So I had to prod him this time uh, to continue the uh, tradition. So I actually took a drink when I was not on screen yet and i had put it down and then i was like oh yeah i probably should have done that on camera oh well <laughs> for for shame sir for shame um <laughs> yes you and i are both incredibly busy with work so we are going to get right into it um state soccer not going to find any talk of that here because myself and christian wiener another North Idaho guy, coincidentally enough, um, we did a special state soccer tournament preview show. We broke down all the brackets, 5A through 3A, girls and boys, gave you uh, coaches, players to watch, key stats. We really dug into these brackets. Um, You can find that audio in this podcast feed, the North Idaho PrepCast. Um, But additionally, uh, we are also taking um, each classification, 5A, 4A, and 3A, and making them their own preview specials on the idahosports.com YouTube channel and Facebook page. So that is where all your state soccer content will be. So we... Oh, go ahead, Ryan. I was going to say, talk to somebody that knows more about the sport than I do. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a smart move, not bringing me in on that one. <laughs> yeah. You know, I thought, I thought Christian would be good because he writes the weekend preview for us every week. And so he uh, highlights several noteworthy soccer matchups every week. And, and it really knows the ins and outs of who's playing well and, and yeah. all of that good stuff. So I will say this, I think Bonner's Ferry boys got a really good draw personally i think that they got a good draw at state but that's just me talking beside the fact so yeah so so, Chris, so christian lives in bonner's ferry and mm-hmm. he, he picked his badgers to get all the way to the championship realistically the way it's drawn up i mean that's not outside the stretch of the imagination at all so i mean i know that he wants to be a little bit of a homer him and i got a chance to do the, the wood river bonner's ferry football game last year uh in the playoffs and he's a great guy um, but I mean, he knows his stuff. I think he also has to coach at the school too. So he does get to scratch the back of the kids on his team a little bit, but, um, no, he's, he's knowledgeable enough. I, it wouldn't surprise me one bit to see that boys team make it into the he's, final. Yeah. Christian was coaching cross country at Bonner's Ferry this year. I think, uh, and Christian can tell me if I'm wrong, but I think he and his wife were doing it together. I think they mm-hmm. were co- coaching together cross country at Bonner's Ferry. Um, and then of course he helped out with boys basketball last year as well. So, uh, I went the opposite way. I picked, uh, American falls over Bonner's Ferry in my upset special. So I'm pretty much never welcome in Bonner's Ferry again. <laughs> no, and that's just didn't behoove you to move to North Idaho too. So <laughs> not, not, a, not a good job there, Brandon, but yeah. you'll get like a letter from a Bateman or something like that. It's not going to be me this year. It'll be you. <laughs> yeah. Cal, Cal, Cal Bateman. I'll send me yeah. an email. He, he and I uh, like to, to go back and forth for sure. Uh, all right. So that's soccer. You can find that uh, on its standalone special, which means let's dive into district volleyball. Things are heating up, Ryan. Uh, again, if you're watching this on the Idaho, sports.com youtube channel or facebook page i'll share my screen put the brackets up on the screen so you can see what's happening if you're listening at idahosports.com or wherever you download your podcasts uh it's all good we've got the district brackets on the home page at idahosports.com and you can follow along that way all right 5a inland empire league Coeur d'Alene, the champs they won a five-set thriller over number two post falls tuesday night 
So Coeur d'Alene advances to state. Post Falls will now have to play Lewiston on Thursday night in the second place battle. Lewiston, the four seed, took out Lake City, the three seed, in a five-set thriller on Tuesday night. The winner of Lewiston and Post Falls will then have to play the sixth place team from District 3 uh, in a state play-in match. We, we knew this league was very talented all year long, and we saw it with the two results last night. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think the more sh- the bigger shock, I think, is Lewiston beating Lake City uh, to make it to that play-in game. But, um, I mean, I still like Post Falls a-, a ton. I think that team is extremely talented, and, and they play really well together. Coeur d'Alene had the magic recipe to get them in that five-set thriller to get their way, you know, to the auto bid in the state tournament. Um, you know, state being up north this year is going to be a, a nice uh, little feather in the cap, too. Um, so you get teams traveling up, up north. So, um, you know, I like, I still like post falls in that match against Lewiston. And, and I think post falls, I still like, um, you know, Coeur d'Alene and post falls both to make some noise in the state tournament. Yep, for sure. Um, so congratulations to the Vikings. Good luck to both post falls in Lewiston as they battle on Thursday night. All right, 4A Inland Empire League. Uh, It gets started, Ryan, Thursday. We've got Moscow, the three seed, at Sandpoint, the two seed. Uh, Winner of that will challenge Lakeland Saturday night, 6 o'clock for the district title. This is single elimination. Better bring your A game. Yeah, and and Lakeland's played really well down the stretch, too, and they, they, they made some noise in the conference this year, especially split with the... Um, 5A schools. I think Lakeland is kind of the the giant in this you know three team bracket. It's it you know it doesn't take much. Sandpoint's got some talent there too. So is Moscow. Um, so you know I I still look at Lakeland as being the favorite to come out of this league and and get that state berth. And I still think that they could get a, a trophy finish at state too. I think that ta- that team is talented enough to to find their way to playing uh, in the in the placing matches uh, on Saturday at state. Yep, it's going to be a really interesting battle. Um, I think initially between Moscow and Sandpoint as well to see who gets mm-hmm. the right to challenge Lakeland yeah. for the for the district title. Um, all right, three A Intermountain League. Hey, this is a best of three game series, and Timberlake and Bonner's Ferry actually split with each other during the regular season. Yeah. Uh, they they each won, I think, on the road at the other team's place. Um, Timberlake uh, won more sets overall right they had a better i think they beat bonners three to one and bonners beat them three to two or something like that so timberlake gets the tiebreaker home court advantage it didn't really mean much bonners ferry went to timberlake on monday night swept the tigers three nothing they will rematch wednesday night and if bonners ferry wins this matchup they take the bid to state timberlake's got to win just to stay alive and force game three yeah, and that's you know, I mean, winning straight sets on the road on a Monday night, like that's a that's a big win for the Badgers, and uh, you know, so like they went in there and, and took care of business, and you know, so home court advantage doesn't mean a whole lot now. Uh, you go into a do or die match tonight; those two teams meet again for this the de facto championship. Barnes Ferry wins; they're going to state. Uh, Timberlake's playing for their life. It, it'll be interesting to see how it how it goes. I think it's going to be a, cl- a close one, and. Uh, you know, I don't. I, this one to me still is a pick 'em, just because of how close they played in the regular season. It wouldn't su- surprise me at all to see them play tomorrow night. Um, you know, if Timberlake wins this one, especially in a close, set, I could see them going to a five set real easy. Um, that's just how close these two have been. Um, if you're making, are you making me pick one? Because I, I honestly, I'm still on the fence on this one. I mean, I like the Badgers with the three zero win last night. They're on Monday night, but. Uh, Timberlake's still still there, and they still got talent on that lineup too. It's going to be very interesting for sure. All right, two A Central Idaho League. We have uh, Kellogg hosting the whole Shindig. They are the number one seed, uh, and so far it's been all chalk here, except for the play-in match. Number five Priest River did beat number four Grangeville three to one. This all went down on Monday. Uh, then you had number one Kellogg beat Priest River, the five seed, three to one. Number two St. Mary's beats number three Orofino, three to one. So Wednesday in Kellogg, it's Kellogg and St. Mary's for the district title. Winner goes to state. 
Priest River will play Orofino in a loser out match. And then the loser of Kellogg St. Mary's will play the winner of Priest River Orofino also Wednesday uh, to determine who gets the second place uh, finish and a chance to go to state via the play in match. Uh, this will all be wrapped up tonight, Ryan. Yeah. And uh, I think that if it comes down to it, it'll be rock, paper, scissors uh, to decide. <laughs> 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 the, the three-legged sack race. Um, but no, I mean I I Kellogg's the one seed, but St. Mary's has made it made it interesting at times. So I mean, if I'm not mistaken, I think St. Mary's came back and stole one this year from Kellogg. So um I don't know, you could correct me if I'm wrong there, but I, I thought I remember that unless I'm thinking of soccer or something else. But um I mean <sighs> Yeah, so 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 St. Mary's and Kellogg both tied. Oh. First place this year. They both went six and two. St. Mary's. Split. Yeah, St. Mary's did beat Kellogg the first time three to one. Kellogg won the rematch three to one. And you're going, well, geez, who else did these guys lose to? St. Mary's lost to Grangeville at the very end of the regular season. And Kellogg uh ended up stubbing their toe against Priest River three to two. So that's where yeah. they both ended up tied at six and two, which, which I think speaks to the overall balance of the league this year. Yeah. No, it's been a competitive conference, and you know either of those teams going to state. I mean, they they can make some noise playing Nampa Christian in a play-in game. Whoever gets there on Saturday, that's no easy feat. That league is absolutely loaded, um, and down in District Three. So, um, you know, I I, I tend to Kellogg hosting. You know, the advantage, but I think you know kind of lie with the Wildcats there, but. You know, St. Mary's and Kellogg split, that could be a five-setter. I mean, we could really see it come down to the wire and come down to the last one. That would be a heck of a match uh, tonight there in Kellogg. Yeah, you best win the district title because going to play Napa Christian, even in Grangeville, it, no guarantee there because Napa Christian went 12-4 and four this year. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you want, you want to get to state, you win. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like I said, that conference down south, man, that, that, that district is absolutely loaded. So there's... There's no easy nights down there that that Nampa Christian team is battle tested. So you want to win and get in the, 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 I don't want to say the easy way, but you want the guarantee for sure. Yep, definitely. So good luck to all four of our two, a squads that are still competing. Uh, one, a D let's go one, a D one first here. Uh, sure. and let's, let's start with district one. This, uh, took place last night at North Idaho college Tuesday night. <laughs> Uh, number two, Genesis Prep beats number three, Lakeside, three, nothing. And now you've got one match, winner take all Thursday night. Wallace, the one seed, Genesis Prep, the two seed. Winner does not advance to state. Winner advances to a state play in match against third place from District Three, which will be either Riverstone or Victory Charter. Um, either way, I think it doesn't matter if it's G Prep or Wallace. I think. Either one of those teams yeah. has a good shot in that play. Well, in had, yeah, in their previous match, I mean, it was a barn burner. So, um, you know, I think that the championship match tomorrow night at NIC is going to be a that's going to be a great a great battle between those two teams. Um, Wallace, I think, coming in with the hotter hand, but Genesis Prep certainly has the talent in that lineup too to make a difference. And I see either of those teams making it in that play in game. Um, I think they could realistically get a get a win there, get a W, and get their way to the state. Um, and do it the hard way. I mean, having a play-in game to be a district champion and playing in the play-in game still to me is I we have we've had thoughts in the past and they remain the same. <laughs> so right. um yeah, no, I look at I look at this and and the minors. I think either of those teams or the Jaguars, like they're both solid programs. They both played really tough against each other this year. Um I think Wallace probably has the edge in this match, but it wouldn't surprise me to see Genesis Genesis prep sneak a district title. Yeah, so Wallace uh, beat G Prep in the regular season three nothing and three one. And I love what Coach um, Coach Katie Bauer did at the very end of the season because Wallace was undefeated and had played strictly D two and D one programs, and they had played St. Regis, Montana, a couple of times. Um, she picked up a, a late season game at Kellogg on Saturday, last Saturday, the final Saturday of the regular season. And we are, we're talking about, okay, Kellogg's playing for their yeah. district championship in two way. I loved it because for Wallace, it was a challenge. And did they win? No, they didn't. Kellogg got the win three to one, but I think that was a good test for Wallace to prepare them for what they're hoping is a run to state. I loved it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's a smart move. I mean, you can learn a lot in a loss, and especially a loss that you don't want to – I mean, it's not going to hurt your schedule. It's not going to hurt anything that way. It's not a league loss, but you get kind of a Silver Valley rivalry going on and stuff too, which is super neat. And I know that the kids, they appreciate picking up the game. So, um, yeah, I think Wallace comes in with a little bit of the upper hand, obviously, with the two victories over Genesis Prep in the regular season. Chief Prep's going to make it interesting and push, but I still I still favor the Miners there, and um, I will take them in the play-in game as well. Definitely. All right, uh, let's go to the White Pine League, District 2, Chalky, Chalk, Chalk, Chalk. Uh, Troy and Kamii, one versus two. They'll play Wednesday night at Lewis and Clark State um, for the district championship. Uh, Troy beat Logos 3 0 in the semis. Kamii and Genesee played to five sets in the two versus three semifinal. The Cubs do win 3 2. And then on the back end of the bracket, it is Genesee and Logos 3 versus 4. Winner of that will challenge the loser of Troy and Kamii for the right to get the second spot at state. But there are two bids available here. I think we both like Troy. The question is, who gets that second spot? Yeah, I mean, Genesee could make it interesting in a in a decider if you go to that 13th match. I mean, that's, you know, that that's a big deal. I think that Troy, obviously, we like a lot. I think they're going to repeat as a state champion. But um, Kamii and Genesee, I mean, look, I don't, I don't think there's any guarantees with Genesee and Logos either. But um, if we do indeed see Genesee get that win against Logos and Troy gets the win like we think, I mean that play that that match thirteen could be a dandy between Genesee and Kamii. We could see a five setter again, and it wouldn't surprise me to see it flip the other direction at all. So in the regular season, Kamii won the first matchup with Genesee three to one. Then in the regular season, uh, not finale, but the second time they played, it was three to two. Kamii still won. Then we get to districts three to two. Kamii wins, and Genesee's going. Man, we're so close. We're almost there. Nope. Um, it'll be interesting to see if uh, if uh, fourth time is the charm for Genesee, but they got to get past Logos first yep. as well. Um, Logos is a they're a pesky team too. I mean that's a, that's a program that, that's getting some wins, and um, you know they're not going to make it easy by any means. Yeah, I mean how tough is Logos? Um, well, they uh, actually went seven and seven in league play this year, but they pushed a lot of the top teams in the conference. And so, yeah, pesky, good, good word to describe this, this Logos team, but good luck to Troy, Kamii, Genesee and Logos as they continue to battle Wednesday night at LCSC in the white pine tournament. Let's stay in the white pine, go to one AD two, the district two edition. Uh, these guys will play on Thursday night at LCSC. Number one, Kendrick. Number two, Deary for the district championship. And both teams advanced to state. Really, the big matches came on Tuesday night where Deary defeated St. John Bosco in the third place match, three to one, eliminating the Patriots and cementing Deary's place at state. But they yeah. uh, will play Kendrick for the district title. Should be a fun match. Yeah, I mean, Kendrick got the winner previously, three one in the in the matchup in the semi there, or the de facto semifinal as they're playing for a true first second. But, um, you know, I like the Tigers again. I think that Kendrick team, you know, we liked them a lot last year too, and um, they returned a lot of that that nucleus of that that team. So there's a lot of talent there on the floor for the Tigers, and I think that they repeat as district – or they, they win the district championship and um, get that, that, you know, favorable seat at state. I mean, that's going to be definitely an advantage um for the north but i mean deary's certainly a, a tough team too and they've been playing well down the stretch but i like the tigers a lot there yeah uh i will tell you uh, that we will be using district tournament results um from max preps uh, so we won't know where everybody is actually truly seated until the ihsaa comes out and says yep here are the final rankings um so it's hard to predict where teams will land on the seed line and another another problem i have is that not every score is being reported yeah um we are still missing district tournament scores from saturday and, and not from this league specifically but other leagues around the state yeah. we're, we're, we're just flat missing results how can you have a max preps ranking system i mean honestly think about it how how can you have a max preps rating system when you don't have all the data 
if there are missing scores, it's not the whole puzzle. And yeah. yet there's no regulation on it. There's no pressure being applied to say, Hey, get your scores in. It's kind of the wild West. I mean, you mean that we need to come up with our own rating system? I mean, where have we heard that before? I don't know. <laughs> there there, there I mean, needs, there we, needs. We, we see it in other sports. I mean, a little bit here and there, but the, without the regulation on it, I mean, it would be the equivalent of seeding the state football tournament and you, you ignore the last, like the eight week eight games. Like, come on. Like you have to have everything in there in order for the formulation, the tabulation to take place. And so the, the fact that you can't see it to kind of predict it coming in that to me just is, yeah, like it, it's easy to report a score. It's, you can do it via text. I mean, it's not hard to do that anymore these days. So I don't get it, but yeah, we, we need somebody, we right. need a football has committees that get together to, to look at the football bracket. We need somebody to say, Hey, school X, Y, Z, get your scores in. So we yeah. can have a complete picture on max preps. It just, it, it, yeah. And you've got guys weekly talking about sports in the state of Idaho and different districts that you think that, I say that kind of jokingly, but um, I mean, there, there's people out there that can, they can, you know, jump on these committees that have eyeballs on these schools. And, you know, it doesn't make any sense to me that, you know, we let an independent entity that's outside of the state of Idaho dictate the seating for tournaments and everything else within the state of Idaho. It just doesn't like, there's got to be some human aspect to it too. It can't just be computer rankings and let that just spit out a number. Like we have to get the human eyeballs in on these committees, whether it's one from representative from each district that's involved or whatever, but like, so be it or region or something. We have to figure something out to get the element of both aspects in to see these, these state tournaments and everything else. Yeah. Uh, get your scores in seriously because you're doing your sport a disservice. Like by doing not. homework, man. Turn your homework in, right? You can't fail if you don't turn your homework in. Like if you turn, just turn it in, like I don't get it, but whatever. That's just me. That's the former teacher in me. Anyways, let me put my screen back up here. Let's look at the last bracket. This is one, uh, the 182 District 1 tournament. It is a two-team affair. You might be <laughs> wondering, hey, aren't there three teams in the North Star League? There are. And in fact, uh, you'll notice Mullen is missing from this bracket. Mullen actually finished in second place in the regular season, but they came out last week and with the news that hey we just we don't have enough players so we yeah. have to kind of punt on the rest of the season we're gonna have to give up our spot at districts which was a big bummer because like i said mullen took second they were playing well uh they just at those small schools it's a fine line if you don't have the yeah. bodies so now kootenai will play clark fork in the championship matchup thursday night at north idaho college uh winner do they advance to state? They do not. The winner advances to a play-in game against third place from District 5-6. And I will tell you, District 5-6 is good. You've got mm -hmm. Grace Lutheran, who's undefeated, Mackey, Rockland, all three really good teams. Yep. This is going to be tough for, I think Clark Fork wins here. And then I think the Wampus Cats are in for a tough battle to get to yep. state. They're in for a battle to find their way in the state tournament for sure. No, you're you're speaking truth there, and you know there's no easy easy way in, and you have to go all the way down to Fruitland to play that game. I mean that's a that's a jaunt if you're Clark Fork. I mean you're you're traveling north to south down most of the state of majority of the state of Idaho to make it to that game. Um, that's a that's a jaunt, and to play at a noon Mountain Time game, 11 a.m. Pacific, that's not a recipe for something that you want to put yourself in a position to do. But I mean, if the Wampus Cats do it, they find their way. They get a magical run and get a victory there. They've earned their – They, I mean, there's no bigger way of earning your way to the state tournament at that point. Hey, congrats on the district championship. Enjoy your seven-hour drive south <laughs> and enjoy your 11 a.m. tip-off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> Boy. Yeah. No favors done there, that's for sure. Yeah, Ugh, Clark Fork. We're not done talking about Clark Fork either. We'll talk about their football team here momentarily but that's what's going on in district volleyball all right skags let's get to the football playoff scenarios final week of the regular season 
most of the stuff is clear cut, but there are yep. some interesting tiebreakers that linger out there. Um, let's just start at the top 5A Inland Empire League. Coeur d'Alene defeats Post Falls last week in a breakthrough win. Hmm, somebody picked the Vikings on this prep cast. I wonder who that was. Yeah. <laughs> I went four and two in my picks last week, though, but I, the Vikings getting Post Falls was not on my list of picks. But I thought it would be a decent game. The Coeur d'Alene, man, they just absolutely put the bootstraps to them. That defense is lights out. Uh, their offense is finding their stride. Um, that's a, that's a, I mean, when when Ken Simmons is on at quarterback, that's a lethal little offense that they've got going on now with moving uh, Jamison Kazar out there into the outside and with the rushing attack that they've got, and they were able to get some guys in space. Um, they've got athletes out there. That Coeur d'Alene team is, is going to be a, a foe to be messed with. I mean, they showed it with that opening uh, week win against Rigby. Uh, they played, you know, Rocky, Rocky tight. So um, that's just a, uh, you know, that Viking team is going to be one that's going to be a formidable foe, I think, going into the playoffs. That quarterback change saved their season, I think. Absolutely. It changed their season. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, because Coeur d'Alene, if they had kept things as they were, their defense is still good. They would have they would have been a good team. But I think the swap that they've made has made their offense more dynamic. Yep. And now Coeur d'Alene, all they have to do is, hey, all they have to do is beat Lewiston. I mean, they, we make it sound so easy. But Lewiston is still – they got something to play for here because if Lewiston uh, can defeat Coeur d'Alene and Post Falls defeats Lake City, by the way, Post Falls and Lake City Thursday night on IdahoSports.com, yours truly and Brian Hall will be on the call for that game. Um, but, but here's the scenarios. Okay, if Post Falls wins over Lake City and Lewiston beats Coeur d'Alene, there's a three-way tie at the top. For first place, they're all three and one. Now, if Post Falls somehow loses to Lake City and Lewiston wins, then Lewiston gets second place outright. So yeah. there's a lot to play for here for the Bengals. Yeah, there's a lot for the Bengals. You know, Drew Hottinger and his his swan song for the Bengals his senior year. You know, he's had a great uh run at quarterback for the, for them. And I mean, there's you know, Jackson Latham at running back. There's still talent on that on that roster. Uh, their defense is is coming around a little bit. They played better last week against Lake City. Um, the Bengals got to show up big though against Coeur d'Alene. They got to shut down some some dudes in space, and they're going to have you know some fits with with what Coeur d'Alene brings offensively now with that change at quarterback. Kazar is a matchup nightmare on the outside. I look at him with his size. He's he's not going to be be able to be covered by your typical you know free safety, strong safety, hybrid corner type player. He he's going to demand the, the, a more physical presence, but do they have the speed to match up with him? That's the question. He's he's faster. He's deceptively quick. Um, so there's, you know, Coeur d'Alene. And then the rushing attack comes into play. And so if Coeur d'Alene going to dominate the line of scrimmage like they did against Post Falls, it's going to be a long night for the Bengals. It really will be. And I don't care how good of a game Hottinger will have. That's just – it's not going to bode well because they're not going to turn the ball over. Um, you know, Post Falls, I look – you know, at their game against Lake City, I think it's going to be kind of a repeat of last year. I really do. Lake City's got some – some issues with, you know, making sure they get their, their, you know, commitments as far as, you know, fits within the defense. Um, you know, they've had holes and it gets exploited. We saw, you know, Emmett go off in the second half against them after they played a really tough first half. Um, then you see what happens. They played Coeur d'Alene fairly tough for about a quarter and a half in that game. And then the Vikings just absolutely blew them out in the second half of that game. Um, you know, they played Lewiston tough for a while and then things start to break down. There's just not the depth there with the T-Wolves. I know that Coach Howitt's doing a great job uh, building men, um, but he's still building that program and getting those guys to play a full four quarters. Yeah, uh, and and you see it. You see the potential and you see the spurts, mm -hmm. and they, they are a younger team at Lake City yeah. uh, this year as well. Uh, back to the Coeur d'Alene-Lewiston matchup quickly. Um, Tevin Burns of Post Falls gashed that Lewiston defense when they played. And I, I, I think Carson Spielman from Coeur d'Alene could have a big night running the yep. rock. Um, if that holds true there as well. So I do like Coeur d'Alene. I do like post falls. I think it's pretty straightforward. Yep. Vikings Trojans get to the playoffs for a, it's pretty much settled. Sandpoint won the inland empire league with their win over Moscow last week. Um, Lakeland is strong enough to get in as an at large, um, Lakeland will be seated somewhere in the 13, 14 range, probably yeah. Sandpoint's looking at the number eight seed. They but will Lakeland, automatically, Oh, go ahead. I was going to say Lakeland picking up a big win against Timberlake last week was, that was a good, you know, kind of coming back after taking some beatings for a good solid month. 
um, you know, and getting some some semblance of health back, getting a few guys back in the lineup. But that was a big win for the Hawks over a decent Timberlake team. So I just had to throw that out there for the Lakeland faithful. Like, you know, they're they're coming around. They can make an interesting game depending on how they get seated. We'll, we'll see. I don't know if they're going to pull the upset in the first round, but they could certainly um, if they get strength back in the running game, they can make things interesting in the playoffs. But Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, uh, I, I completely agree. So standpoint uh, on the other side is as the district champ, they will automatically get a top eight seed. Uh, they seed one through eight. Those are the auto bids based on max preps. Sandpoint's locked in at number eight. Um, yeah. So they'll get a home playoff game. Then they're going to have to hit the road and we'll, we'll see from there. And honestly, they're going to have a tough first round matchup. It's going to be either Shelly or Skyline. Those yeah. two, those two play on Friday night on idahosports.com and you can pretty much mark it in whoever doesn't win that is going to be the best at large team so if you're sandpoint you want to get a jump on the scouting tune into idahosports.com this friday night with skyline yep. battle shelly no buys for the top seed so i mean the whole, the whole field of 16 gets seeded out and so that eight nine game i mean those get real interesting you get the the seven ten eight nine matchups those are those are always a fun one i mean sandpoint I looked at Skyview last year and I was like, man, this is a team that could give them fits. It kind of was for a while. Sandpoint closed them out late. But um, we talk about quarter, quarterback changes with Coeur d'Alene. I think, you know, Sandpoint's one worth mentioning as well. That, that offense is different since they've made that quarterback changes. And, you know, for the better, I mean, that program, they've taken off offensively now that they've got the right guys in the right spot. Um, you know, they're able to move the ball pretty efficiently. And Max Frank is an absolute dude. I mean, you talk about him. In the senior year, he's coming out there. I think he's going to be a difference maker in the playoff game. If they're going to win, it's going to be on the back of him. But um, yeah, no, that's that's a it's going to be a tough matchup for Sandpoint in the first round. It's not going to be like what they've seen in previous years. Yeah, and I think a guy that kind of quietly gets overlooked um, for Sandpoint as well is, uh, especially in the running game, is Cody Brewster. Yeah, absolutely. Good good running back for he's for a good little right he's not the biggest kid but i mean he's physical as a runner and he he will get yardage so he'll get his so i look at yeah. sandpoint they're going to be you know team to be reckoned with they can play defense pretty well they're pretty disciplined on that side of the ball um you know i think it says a lot they did lose to a close one to homedale again um, but that homedale team i mean that's you know you're looking at a collision course with them and sugar again in the 3a um those are two teams I think they play. They're the top eight teams, you know, in 4A. Like, they're just as good as and talented as any of those teams are. So that says a lot about that Sandpoint group. Yep, for sure. Uh, 3A, pretty simple. Timberlake travels to Bonners Ferry. Two-team Intermountain League Championship on the line. Bonners Ferry won last year. Timberlake is favored this year coming in. And here's the, here's the deal. Uh, the winner gets an automatic top five seed. Um, based on being a district champion um, and a home playoff game. Uh, winner probably going to be the number five seed also is yeah. kind of how it's looking. Timberlake, if they lose, will still get in via an at-large. Bonners Ferry's got to win. They don't have yep. a strong enough max preps to get an at-large spot. So for the Badgers, hey, go get it. Yeah, I mean, you got them last year. You nipped them in that game. I look at Timberlake, though. They've got to be miffed a little bit at the last two weeks that they've had, um, you know, and, and the results that have been showing up. I think that between the Lakeland loss and the Sugar loss, Sugar, they played tough. Um, you know, the scoreboard didn't replicate how well they actually played offensively. Um, so I look at Timberlake. I think that they they get a big win on Friday. I don't think it's close. Um, I think that there's a statement to be made by the Tigers, and, and I know they're looking at probably a five seed, and then they get three seeded after the first week, if I'm not mistaken, too. So they could have a very, very tough matchup, um, you know, coming back if they get a first round win. But um, it'll be interesting to see how that one shakes out for sure. Yes, it it is reseeded according to Max Preps rankings after the first round, and Timberlake would almost certainly be hitting the road uh, yep. for that round of play. So yeah, big big matchup there. Two A, it's done, done and dusted. Grangeville beats Kellogg last week, wasn't even close. Bulldogs are your District Two champions, and will head to state as the lone team from the league, um, yep. and and well deserved. Um, they'll get a home playoff game. Uh, they will be probably the, so the five district district champions get the top five seeds automatically. Grangeville is going to get the number five seed. They'll get a home game 
uh, and then they'll have to hit the road. Yeah, and then they're not going to get an easy home game. Let's be let's be real about that. With being the five seed, they're going to have a difficult matchup. Um, but I mean, the Bulldogs they did what they they set out to do: get that league title, get that championship. That's a big deal. Um, you know, winning a conference is relatively balanced. I mean, I think this year it's not the, not as strong as we saw last year, or the year prior, but still a conference that's a champion. I mean, you're coming out of that league with a big win. There's a couple teams there that are reeling a little bit. Um, but you know, they, they did it in fashion. They took care of business. And so they're going to roll into the, the first round with a, with a home game. And that's a big deal for that team. Um, after the last couple of years that they've had, you know, historically a great program and, you know, not having the finishes that they want the last, you know, three, four years, but, um, being able to come back in the playoffs of the home game, you know, that's a big deal for that town and that team. So it'd be great to see Grangeville get a win in the first round. I'd love to see that. Um, Cause I think that bodes well for a team that's got some youth there too. So they're going to be growing in the next couple of years as well in two way football. Yes. Well, I should say they're going to become three a now, but you know what I mean? The right. last year at two way. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> for sure. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. That'll be a whole new verbiage. We'll have to learn. Um, eight man football, one, a D one white pine league. It, it's, it's done. Logos is your league champion. They beat Troy last Thursday, even with a loss to Prairie on Friday, Nobody can catch Logos in, in the loss column. You've got Kamii traveling to Potlatch for second and third in what should be a fun game, but those are the three teams that'll get the three auto bids. Logos, Kamii, Potlatch, Prairie. Hanging on by their fingernails. Here's, here's really what Prairie needs uh, because they're in this battle for basically the last at large spot, and they're on the wrong side of it right now. So for Prairie, they have to go out and beat Logos. No doubt about it. They've got to win. They also then need um, Carrie to lose to Raft River. Carrie, Carrie is the team that um, is currently ranked ahead of them. It, it goes Valley, Carrie, Prairie uh, for, for the final two playoff spots. And Valley and Carrie are in. Prairie is not. So they need Carrie to lose to Raft River. But here's the crux. Raft River is right behind Prairie. Yeah. Only separated by like 0. 0.3 points. So if Rat River does beat Carey, they probably leapfrog Prairie. So that's kind of like a neutral. I don't know. If Prairie can get a win over Logos. That's a huge lift in your ranking. But I mean, that's the number two team in the state that you're beating. So I I think I think to be ultra safe here, and 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 don't don't come back come at me and say this happened and we still didn't get in because there's <laughs> there's still a chance that it doesn't matter what prairie does they may just be however the computers do this they may just be on the wrong side of it but there might be a chance if prairie goes out and beats logos by 15 or more that's the old that's the maximum you can win by in the algorithm in terms of you know margin of victory and then not necessarily the carry raft river game but Valley is playing notice and notice is ranked like 14th in the state. They're behind all those teams. They're behind Prairie. Even um, if, if Valley goes to notice and loses by 15 or more, then maybe Prairie can leapfrog Valley for that last spot. I've got, I've got something to throw in there. And I, I told you a couple of years ago, I thought I figured out the algorithm with the max prep stuff. Um, and that was, your strength of schedule matters a little bit. It carries some weight um, and it's your common opponent and how they finish their games. And if they get, we saw Sandpoint go from like, I think it was like a four or a five seed and they jumped into the top two seed line. And we're like, how in the world did they do it? And I looked through their past results and they had a team that they had played that won by greater than 15. And that was enough that lifted them up into that line because it raised that team that they beats overall ranking and strength. So if, if that is true, and I thought that I saw something in the, in the, the formulation and that's correct. They're going to be banking on everybody that they've beaten previously to show up this weekend and win big. Um, so anybody that they've got, you know, wins over like Lapway needs to show up and win by more than 15. They need teams that they've previously got the road wins over to win big. So uh, I look at that. They're going to need a lot of help in order to be safe. Even then we're saying that's a big hypothetical if they beat Logos because Logos is a juggernaut right now in my mind. Uh, they're one of the top two teams. And that's just, I'll say it and I'll stand on that one. People can throw darts at me all they want, but I'll say Logos in my mind is a top two team in 181. And 
uh, they're a favorite, if they, especially if they get to play in the dome. I mean, that's that's a recipe for lighting somebody up with seventy five. Um, so you play in late season football in North Idaho inside on a fast track. That's going to be a recipe for success for that Logos team. But um, yeah, I mean, they're going to need some help. Prairie needs their their common opponent or previous opponents to win big to lift their rankings as well. Um, the more that they can get teams that are like those fringe teams, like a Clearwater Valley or whoever else that's out there, um, you know, that's they're going to need some help to be safe with a with a raft river or a valley or whoever else is kind of floating around out there. They're going to need all the help they can get. It's a mess. <laughs> for yeah, sure. it is. <laughs> yep. Uh, so g- good luck, Prairie. I mean, they they missed out. La- they should have been in the playoffs last year. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They should be in the playoffs this year, but stupid District 3. No, I'm just yep. kidding. District 3 gets two auto bids, and both of the teams from District 3 that are going to go to the playoffs are ranked below everybody else that's in yep. contention for a playoff spot. It just, yep. it is what it is. So yep. anyway, take care of what you can control. And that's how you play during the regular season. And it's coming back that you just so happen to be in the toughest conference, top to bottom in one AD one football. That's right. Okay. One AD two. Let's wrap up white pine league. Kendrick plays Deary. Lewis County plays Timberline. Lewis County, wild win over Deary. They win by two points last week. Gage Crow, five rushing touchdowns, but the most important play he made was on defense. Deary had the ball late. They were threatening to bleed out the clock with a lead. Gage Crow uh, recovers a fumble or forces a fumble that gives Lewis County the ball back. They then go on a long drive. They get the game-winning touchdown and two-point conversion. Aiden McLeod, the quarterback, runs in the two-point conversion to get the two-point win. This all came with like 30 seconds to play. So Lewis County pulls another one out of the – they've been in some wild games this year, man. They they yeah. pulled this one out of the fire. And so you're thinking, all right, Kendrick and Lewis County, those are the two teams going, right? Not so fast. Um, there's a world where Deary could beat Kendrick on Friday. I mean, I'm not saying it's likely, but they could. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if yeah. it, it, I don't want to roll a certain, like, an entire school, but, I mean, like, I don't know what alternate universe you'd have to travel to for that to take place, but... In, in, in mean, the realm in the realm of mathematical possibilities, it exists. Uh, so you're saying there's a chance. Yeah. That's right. That's exactly the line I used in, Christmas. In, yeah. <laughs> in my bracketology article I wrote. Um, okay, so Deary could beat Kendrick. Lewis County could beat... Uh, Timberline that would create a three-way tie for first at three and one. It comes down to a point differential system. Kendrick wins that pretty easily. Uh, but the more intriguing scenario is on the back end to me. Okay, let's say Kendrick beats Deary. I'm really going out on a limb there saying that. Um, <laughs> but let's say also that Lewis County turns around and loses to Timberline. Now, Timberline's taking it on the chin this year, but they just got back last week. All-State running back Rylan West, who has been out for most of the season with a broken collarbone, and he is a true difference maker for Timberline. And so Lewis County, it's it's not like it's an easy game with Timberline coming up here. And so now you're looking at, for Timberline, a chance to beat Lewis County and force a three-way tie for that second and final playoff spot where Deary, Lewis County, and Timberline would all be one and two. And again, it would come down to the point differential. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't looked at the, the finishing records there to see that what the differential is i don't know how quitting at halftime helps your overall point differential also what, do, uh, so, so between those three teams so i think they throw out the kendrick game obviously but yes yeah. only only in the head-to-head matchups against gotcha. each other so, so and, and i will say lewis county only beat deary by two um i'm trying to think back to what Deary won by earlier this year. I'll look that up here in a second, but it could come down to okay, can Timberline win, and by how much can they win? Um, yeah. it, it gets it gets capped at nine points though, so that's the other thing we have to consider here to prevent you know any running up yeah. of the score. No, and that's where I'm. You know, I look at it, and you know, we talk about the controllables. Lewis County just has to take care of business. They got to win. They got to show up. They got to, and it doesn't even have to be convincingly. They just have to take care of business, do what it takes to get the victory. You're in the playoffs. Congratulations. You're on the road in the playoffs, but you're in the playoffs. Um, you know, and then you look at the 
I mean, there's kind of a mess up here. So, I mean, you can go to District 1 and it's not any more clear either. So, um, I mean, other than Mullen St. Regis, we know that. But, um, you know, is there a collision course that we could see two teams from the north? I think the bigger thing is like the bigger talking point is going to be how does it get seeded? Does Mullen St. Regis get on the opposite end of Kendrick? And could we see an all north? you know, final, or do we see an all-north semi? Like, I think Mullen St. Regis is a team that not a lot of people are talking about that I think is, you know, quietly having a very, very successful season or the team that nobody wants to face, and we can talk more about them in a minute. But to finish the argument out about, you know, Lewis County, Timberline, Deary, I mean, I don't see either of the, any of those teams making a push beyond the first round. So, I mean, it's kind of – I don't want to – poo-poo on somebody's party but um you know i want to see you know okay let's see a kansas city or we're not gonna see a kansas city tie break so we're just going to a point differential at that point who who's gonna go beat rockland or who's gonna go you know wherever they're gonna have to probably go play down in district five six like that's my guess is they're playing down down south somewhere um but yeah so i don't know like it's kind of a weird non-argument that's an argument that's worth a talking point but it's also like we've got kendrick you know, as the one seed, there's your bell cow. Kind of go carry on and uh, go figure it out, I guess. <laughs> no. Man, who peed in your Cheerios? You got all gloomy there for, for a hot minute. Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's I mean, we're arguing about semantics over a point differential. Right? We'd rather just see them fight it out on the field. Go figure it out Friday night and then go find your way into the playoffs. Just win your game, Lewis County, looking at you. Like, go do that. Nothing else really matters. So, yeah. <laughs> Poo -poo the party. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's good. That's funny. Uh, I, I think I think that's great. Okay. So, 182 bracket. Uh, you talked about a couple of things. I'll help, I'll help clarify. Mullen, St. Regis, and Kendrick uh, are on the same side of the bracket. So, it would be an all north semifinal. Gotcha. Uh, potentially, you're looking at there. Second place from District 2 has to travel, actually gets to, let me double check this. Yes, they have to travel to the third, the second place team from District 3. And that's oh. going to be either Garden Valley or Tri-Valley. Boy, what if we got a Lewis County Tri-Valley rematch in the opening round of the playoffs? Now that gets interesting. I mean, <laughs> that... And that's, that's a game that I look at and I'm like, realistically, yeah, District 2 gets the win there. Like, that that then we got then we're talking about something like i think deary too in that situation if they get there i think that's a winnable game i look i mean timberline if they get the running game going i mean there's a lot for timberline to make it in they're gonna have to make up some serious ground um but i mean they're gonna have to hope that kendrick should, well it's head to head right so they did no favors and they were hurt going into that deary game the first time around so the, the fa it's really gonna be between deary and Lewis County in my mind, if it comes down to a right. to a tie break, but uh, Lewis County win and you're in, you get a you could get a possible rematch. That's awesome. Like they're probably saying, "Let's go, make it happen." So like, yeah, that's that's a cool deal there. I'm here for it. See, you you've already got a sunnier disposition. I'm I'm, I'm glad. Well, I gotta I'm let the light in a little bit, and it gets a little <laughs> bit brighter. And yeah, yeah. All right, and, and now lamp. get my happy light on. Yeah. Yeah, you need that vitamin D. Uh, let's okay. Let's wrap up with the North Star League one A D two District one. This is actually pretty simple. Mullen St. Regis won the league last week with their victory over Wallace five and zero in the league, seven and one overall. Their only loss was to Shelby High from Montana. Uh, Wallace is eliminated. They're one and four. They can't yep. do anything else. And now Clark Fork and Lakeside are both two and three. So it's yep. pretty simple. The winner. A Friday night's game in Clark Fork gets that second spot to the playoffs. And yeah. you can watch that game live and free on IdahoSports.com. It's like a playoff game before the playoffs. Are you doing you're doing that game, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'm very there excited. Go, yeah. There's a good little bakery there in, in Clark Fork, by the way, just FYI. So get yourself a little snack before the game. I don't know if the bakery's going to be open at night. I think they're early. If you were there early enough, they might be. There's a good little spot there in Clark Fork that's got, yeah. Right, we'll see. You can ask Paul Kingsbury about that one. Um, 
<laughs> but no, I mean, you, you talk about you saw you had the previous matchup between those two teams also that that Lakeside won on the turf there at the Merrim Health Center. Um, but now they're gonna hit the road up to Clark Fork. I mean, could be a sloppy night, possible chance of rain. Ball could be on the turf a lot in that one. Um, gosh, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see them. Clark Fork's playing tough right now. I mean, you look at their last their last game. I mean, they it wasn't, you know, it was pretty decisive on what they were able to do. So, um, I mean, they beat Wallace. So, I'm going to lean Clark Fork. But, I mean, Lakeside's got the athletes. That's the problem that, you know, they make every game interesting just because of their athletic talent. Clark Fork, you know, controls the ball, San Roman and everybody else up there. But, um, you know, I'm going to lean to that group just because of the seasoning that they had last year with the playoff run down late. But uh, it wouldn't be surprising if you see the Knights sneak their way into the playoff, too. That could be – or sneak their way into a second-place finish. That would be a good a good job for the Knights and a chance to, you know, something special. Lakeside did win the first matchup in Worley, as you alluded to. Um, the game was tight at halftime, and then back-to-back turnovers by Clark Fork in the third yep. quarter uh, gave Lakeside the lead, and they never gave it back. Clark Fork, much different team now, though. They are rolling on all cylinders. Yep. I, I picked the Wampus Cats in our weekly pick six that we do on IdahoSports.com social media, where all the prep casters pick six games each week. So we will see how it all shakes out. It yep. should be a really fun one, though, Friday night. So. Yeah, I picked. I think I picked them as well. So um, it'll be an interesting affair. Um, should be a fun game. I think you're in for a, you're in for a dandy. There's going to be some entertaining and fireworks in that one. You know, like you're going to have a, a ton of fun doing that game. Yep, for sure. All right. Well, let's take a look. Uh, let's uh, wrap it up for today. Uh, good luck to everybody competing at state soccer this weekend at district yep. volleyball and the final week of the high school football season as well. As always, Ryan Skaggs, thank you for joining us. Yeah, until next week. We'll talk state playoff football next week. Yeah, we'll have actual. I don't have to do any more bracketology. It's just brackets, which is yeah. nice. <laughs> it's definitely nice. Yeah. Um, all right. Thanks for tuning in to the North Idaho PrepCast, everybody. We'll see you next time on IdahoSports.com.